Former Vice President of the United States Joe Biden has now officially announced that he is going to be running in the 2020 presidential election going for the head of the Democratic Party. Now, I, I felt this was coming. I think a lot of people realized that he was probably definitely going to do this. Now, I, I think it's very interesting some of the things that he has said. He has said that he's running because the core values of the U.S., our very democracy, everything that made America, America, is at stake. Now, I think that there are two ways of looking at this. One is that it's a rejection of the kind of Trumpism, for, for the lack of a better term, and that this kind of, you know, just trash all the agreements you make just completely trash relations with other countries is a bad thing. And from the standpoint of preserving capitalism, yes, it is a bad thing because then you become unreliable. People don't want to do business with you. And then the BRICS countries start building alternative institutions to get around the ones that you control because you're being really unfair. Of course, just burn capitalism to the ground would be a better solution. But we're talking about the Democratic Party here. So I think that's really what this is about. I mean, we could, obviously, Joe Biden is going to be Obama 2.0, and I think that that's really what the Democratic Party wants. In my personal opinion, I think that's exactly where the Democratic Party wants to go. They want to go back to Obama. Because they look at everything Trump does, and people who vote Democrat really hate it, and they want Obama back. So why not offer them Obama 2.0? Now, this does stand in contradiction to the polls that the Democratic parties have, where Bernie Sanders comes out on top, you know, every single time. So it, it's interesting that you can see how the party is choosing the thing that serves the capitalist class and serves, so you can see where the general principles of the Democratic Party really are. They're with another Obama. They're not with a Bernie Sanders. Now, whether or not they're going to let Bernie Sanders get the nomination this time and not completely screw him out of it is another issue altogether. I personally don't believe that it's something that they're going to let happen. I think they're probably going to screw Bernie Sanders out of the nomination. And again, I mean, it's like he didn't learn his lesson last time. Like, maybe he feels that was just something Hillary did for her own self and not something the Democratic Party elite do in general. If you really bring it down, I believe it's probably going to come down to either Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. Woman, black, uh... For whatever reason, a lot of young people like her, even though she's completely full of it. Uh, and I don't even just mean, oh, I listened to Tupac and Biggie before they even were Tupac and Biggie. Kind of that whole kind of scandal that broke out. On the other side of that is the, I think, really is the rejection of Bernie Sanders. I mean, we're seeing more and more uh, progressives with what would be considered by American standards to be radical positions. Uh, AOC, uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, Yang, uh, a lot of these things in general, like a complete uh, abolishment of drugs. Uh, um, Elizabeth Warren saying debt forgiveness on student debt. So you see how many of these really, really progressive in a left or leaning Democrats are appearing, and they are afraid of that. It's not like capitalism is under threat from the left. It really isn't. There basically is no, there is no mainstream left in the United States. It, it doesn't exist. I'm sure there's a lot of radical left in your online Facebook group, but in real, actual mainstream society, it's really not there. There's a great deal of very liberal ideas, and there's uh, very many uh, social democratic ideas. And that's what the Democratic Party really is afraid of. They don't want to do a debt forgiveness because they are funded by a lot of institutions which make money off of that, namely called the financial sector, which makes interest off of these loans. And the longer it takes you to, buy off, uh, to pay off those loans, the more they make in interest. So it's in their, literally in their profit mode of interest to charge interest. So I think that's another, another aspect to it on that other side. Not just the anti-Trump side, but the anti-Bernie side as well. But here's another thing I expect. I expect another push along the ID poll line. 
the Democratic Party certainly does stand with ending racial inequality. Now, they're not going to be able to do it. You can't end inequality in a system based on inequality. But the desire to do so is there. Because these kinds of hostilities are not good for capitalism. Not at this stage. In previous stages, it was. But in this stage, in the current instability of capitalism as it is, as it is heading towards another crisis, it needs as much social cohesion as possible. And one of those is dealing with racism in society. So while I believe that there is a degree to which they, the Democratic Party wants to eliminate racism, to a degree... Although some idiot will quote me as saying there's no racism in the Democratic Party because they're dishonest assholes. It's not going to happen. There's not going to be an elimination of racism. But they do want to tamp down racial antagonisms in order to essentially just let capital accumulate because that's essentially what they want in the end. They don't really want a complete elimination of racism. They just want the profits to flow and enough social peace in order to make that happen. So I probably, I see that a lot of more of this coming, uh, there's probably going to be more pro-LGBT stuff coming out in the future, more bills protecting LGBT people, which are not a bad thing. I'm not saying that it's bad. What I am saying is that it's not revolutionary. If you are fighting for the same thing that the mainstream political establishment is fighting for, then it's not revolutionary. That doesn't make it a bad thing. It just means it's not revolutionary. The fight for 15 has taken up by how many Democrats in office right now? Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, AOC, and there's a ton of uh, mainstream Democratic uh, personalities that are also pro $15 an hour minimum wage. The fact that the mainstream political establishment will fight for it, the fact that bourgeois economists will defend a $15 an hour minimum wage shows that the bourgeoisie is okay with it to a large degree. There are some sections of the capitalist class who stand in contradiction to this because it undermines their, their bottom line because labor is the only thing that's, that's variable capital. It's not revolutionary. If the mainstream establishment is going to do it, then it's not revolutionary. This is why we as Marxists focus on class struggle and not identity politics, because we're not supposed to, because we are Marxists. This does not mean that somehow racism doesn't exist or that I or that I believe that reverse racism exists, as one particular asshole likes to think. I'm saying it's not revolutionary. And you won't win people over to Marxism by advocating the same thing that the mainstream political establishment already supports. Why would you go with some like obscure online group to essentially not do revolution when you could just vote Democrat and you essentially wouldn't have to do anything but show up on the election day? I mean, it's, it's common sense here. But in the end, it looks like if they're going to keep pushing this, the Democratic Party is going to keep pushing this. If they sideline Bernie, throw in Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Beto, whatever, they're going to hand the country right over to Trump for another, for another four years. Now, I'm not calling it, saying that this is a lock, it's going to happen. I'm saying this very well could happen, given the fact that the Democratic Party doesn't want to do the more progressive things that the public wants to do. We saw that Fox News poll that polled conservatives. If it came down to it, who would you vote for, Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders? And they said Bernie Sanders. You know, 40% to 47%, which is still fairly close. But that is significant, that even the conservatives would prefer Bernie Sanders over Trump. They can win if they choose Bernie Sanders. But Bernie Sanders is just a little bit too far left for uh, the mainstream bourgeois establishment. So if I was the Democratic Party, I would give them Bernie Sanders, but put a hell of a lot of restrictions on him, which is probably, if they were going to go with Bernie Sanders, they would essentially have to, or he would represent too much of a threat to the system. So that's my take on 
the situation where the situation now that Joe Biden is running in 2020, whether he's going to end up the nominee for president or vice president, or even if it's, it's him at all, this is basically what I think is going to happen. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.